So we're asked that if the magnitude of the resultant force acting on the bracket is 600 newtons and it's directed along the positive u-axis, determine the magnitude of F1 and its direction phi. So what we're going to need to do is use our sum of forces in the x and y direction equations in order to work out the resultant. Um, but what I'm going to start with is dealing with the resultant itself, so fr. So what we know is that it needs to be directed along this axis in the positive direction, it even tells us. So it, what it should look like is something like this. It's a 45 degree angle, so let's dot that in as well. And we know that it has to be 600 newtons. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to put this into an x and a y component. So let's dot it in. So this is going to be FRY. You know there's a right angle in there. And this here is going to be FRX, the horizontal length of this line. So because we know the magnitude and we know the direction, we should be able to do it fairly easily. So let's start with FRX. It's going to be equal to 600. And then it's the adjacent side that we're looking for, since we're working with this angle. So it's going to be cos of 45. And we can also look at the y direction, similarly. So it's going to be 600. This time it's going to be the opposite side. So it's going to be sine of the angle. So it's going to be 600 sine 45. Um, what we can also think about is whether they're going to be in the positive or the negative x directions. And this one's pretty easy because this is pointing in the positive x direction. This is pointing in the positive y direction. So when they go in the equation, both of these need to go in as positive. So I'll leave them as they are. All right, so now let's move on to looking at summing the forces. And we know that the sum of the forces in the x direction has to give us the resultant force in the x direction. So we're working with this uh, three forces. We've got F1, F2, and F3, and we're going to need to split each of them up. So let's start with um, the ones that are kind of easy, this one and this one, since we're given all the properties of them. So if we start with F3, this is its x component, and this is its y component. So this x part is going to be 500, and it's going to be the adjacent side to this angle, so cos of 45. And it's pointing in the positive x direction, so it's going to go into the equation as positive. I'll leave it like that. So let's go with this one next. So again, we're going to have to divide it into the two different parts. And this time we're not actually given an angle, we're given this little diagram to help us work out um, the direction of our force. So it's kind of similar to what we just do with when we have angles. Um, so we start with the magnitude or the hypotenuse of our triangle, so it's going to be 650. And if you want to, you can work out the angles within this triangle, but an easier way is to just take the ratio. So if you want the horizontal part of your force, what you do is you take the horizontal side of your triangle, which is 3, and you divide it by the hypotenuse of your triangle, which is 5. Okay. In a moment when we try and work out the vertical um, force, what we're going to do is again take the magnitude, 650, but this time the ratio is going to be the vertical side of the triangle divided by, again, the hypotenuse. Okay, so we'll look at that in a second. So again, we need to consider, though, whether it's going to be the um, pointing in the positive or the negative x direction. This time our x component here is pointing backwards, so it's going to be a negative. All right, so this is the kind of trickier one since we're working with the variables. So we've got a magnitude of F1 and an angle phi that we're trying to find. And we can use the same form. So it's going to be F1, the hypotenuse of the triangle. I should have probably drawn the split up form. All right, so this is the adjacent side of the triangle when we're working with the um, phi. So it's going to be cos. Okay, and again, this is pointing in the positive x direction, so it's going to get a plus. All right, finally, we know it's equal to FRX, and we just worked that out. We said that it had to be equal to 600 cos 45. Okay, so we get a complete equation. Now, it looks a little bit messy. Um, we can clean it up 
Um, if I take this number and this number and put them on the other side of the equation, combined with 600 cos 45, I end up with just this on the left hand side and all the numbers can be condensed down to 460.71. All right. Now, we can't really solve this equation for a unique solution at this point um, because we have two unknowns. We have f1 and we have phi. So we need a second equation um, to be able to solve these simultaneously. So we get that second equation from summing in the y direction now since we have a restriction on that. And it's just exactly the same process. So let's start with this one again. So this vertical component is going to be 500. It's going to be the opposite. So sine 45. And it's going to be pointing in the negative y direction. So it gets a negative in the equation. We then move on to this one here. So we're going to take the 650 newtons. And to get just the vertical part, remember we can take the ratio. So if you want the vertical part, it's going to be the vertical side of the triangle, which is 4, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 5. Okay. This one here is pointing in the positive y direction, so it's going to get a plus. Finally, we move on to F1. So it's going to be F1, again, it's the opposite, so it's going to be sine of 5. And um, it's pointing in the positive y direction, so it's going to get a plus in here. All right. Finally, on the other side, it's equal to the resultant in y, and we have an expression for that. So it's going to be 600 sine 45. All right, so again, we can kind of make this equation look a little bit nicer. I'm going to put all these numbers together and put them on the other side of the equation. So we're just left with f1 sine phi is equal to 257.82. And finally, we have two equations with the same two unknowns, so we're able to solve them simultaneously. Now, there's a few different methods. You can kind of work th this through. Um, you should get the same answer. I'm just going to demonstrate one of them. So let's call this one here equation one. And I'm going to rearrange this one and substitute it into equation 1. So let's say we go for F1. It's equal to 257.82 divided by sine phi, moving that to the other side. So I'm going to call this equation 2. And when I substitute them in, So this here, F1, this representation of it, goes in for F1 up here. So it's going to be 257.82 on sine phi. That's what F1 is. Copy out the rest. So we've still got cos phi is equal to 460.71. We've now got it down so that we only have one unknown in our equation. So we're able to solve for the answer. And for this one, a little bit of a trick is that here okay so sine divided by cos is equal to 10 if you can remember that um, it's going to make your life a little bit easier for some of these simplifications so let's go ahead and use that in our equation so if I um, let's multiply sine up to this side okay and I'm going to divide by cos down to the other side over here I'm left with 257.82 and I'm going to divide by this to bring it down to the other side. Okay. So now what I end up with is this sine divided by cos, which we can replace with 10. Okay. And this here is still going to be some number. I didn't work that out. I'll just leave it in fraction form. So if we want to know what phi is, we just need to take inverse 10. And the answer comes out to be 29 point, sorry, 23 degrees. Okay, so this is one of the answers that we were looking for, um, which is the angle that we require for F1 to be acting at.
So the only other piece of information we need to answer the question is what F1 actually needs to be. So now that we know the angle, if we scroll back up, we had our two equations that we can kind of work with. Uh, this one and this one and conveniently this one's already kind of rearranged for F1 So now that we know the angle we can just substitute it straight in. So let's go ahead and do that So the equation was 257.82 divided by sine of phi Which is now 29.23 and the answer comes out to be about 527.9 newtons Okay, so that's the other answer for the question so that's all there is for this one. I'll see you in the next video.